And now, Smart Club. Hi, and welcome back to Committee Program. I am your host, Arun Chaudhary. And as promised, we have a French election update. Where we're at right now is between... We finished the presidentials that had both rounds. Uh, we'll probably talk about that a bit. And now we have the, the legislatives coming up. Uh, and with us are two friends of the show, Nanon Lagarde and Pauline rapidly Fernio. And they are going to tell us how we should feel about this legislative election and also how they feel about how this election went. And I'm just going to, spoiler alert, not good. Uh, I mean, set the stage for us. I'll ask you, Nanon, first. Uh, I mean, how did this all turn out? How did people feel? And especially from the turnout perspective, because we know that, that that's something that you were, you know, fighting against abstentions in this election was your main thing. What was turnout? Who did turn out? And how did that affect, you know, Macron's not as big as last time, but sort of whatever win? Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot to say. There is no surprise. There, is, there was a high uh, rate of people that didn't go to vote, but not too high in order to 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 be a, a topic during the the weeks of the election. So yeah, some too many people didn't go to vote, but not enough to make it a real thing. And there is no news in how people turn out or not. It was the the usual. There is no uh, new. We could expect the young people to show up a bit more that it, that they did, but not that much. And the, the election and the campaign was shitty, so of course people didn't show up to vote. And the, the main thing that is important for us to remember is that we had a second turn with Macron and Le Pen, and that wasn't scary enough to people to show up to vote. And that's something that we need to learn for the next election. Basically, we should have had a, a, a higher turnout for the second turn, and that didn't happen at all. So that's something new for us, and that mainly the only thing that is new regarding how people went to vote. There is not a lot to learn from this election, unfortunately. No, and sometimes there isn't. On this show, I think often we're saying, like, when we can't, we shouldn't pretend to learn all these things from every election, necessarily. Um, one thing I do think from our perspective outside, it's hard for us to know, but I have heard from people, is that Marine Le Pen is not a talented politician. Like, she's sort of not good. Uh, how much do you think people are looking for what she is selling generally. You know, this is why you have other right candidates, you know, who's, who get enough percentage to sort of make a majority. Uh, how much is it her lack of talent and how much is it just, you know, fear of, of the actual fascist outcomes? You know, because I think we're fed in the West uh, and in North America this idea that she's another one of these sort of talented, uh, you know, fashy kind of Salvini, you know, kind of things well i wouldn't say she, that she is not talented at all she was she did a great campaign she's much, much better than a lot of the candidates on the left side mm. something that we've learned is that when you are doing politics old school it works that she did a completely boring campaign and it works quite well she decided to go all over france to meet with people and to organize small meetings people loved it and that's yeah. what she was so so good. She wasn't that good in the in the second turn, but just before that, the whole campaign, she was great. She was better than so many of our candidates. She didn't manage to 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 talk to to new people, and she benefited a lot from people who wanted to vote for Zemmour but didn't because they thought that it was more useful to vote for her. So basically, she was one of the greatest candidates. Um, Macron didn't did uh, didn't do a great campaign, but she did. She she was amazing at the way she did campaign and and show us that you don't have to do a Mélenchon style meeting to to win a campaign, and you can do things. Right, it was more grassroots, right? More yeah. more person to person. Really. Uh, the only thing tactic again from the outside that we saw Macron do in the second round was all of a sudden speaking up loud and fast about environmental issues to sort of seemingly to get the reluctant youth. Pauline, I mean, you're the audience for this. What did you think? Uh, did you find it convincing? Um, and then uh, we'll, I'd love to transition into talking about your candidacy now. But but okay. no, I mean, you were the audience for this. Exactly you, right? This is who he wanted. Okay, well, I think no one has been uh, naive on Macron's promises. Like he said, oh, 
ecology is important, blah, blah, blah. But everyone just like, everyone just voted against yeah. Le Pen. And I would just want to go back on what you said about people perce like seeing Marine Le Pen as being uh, good or not good. I don't think she's bad. Like, I think she's a good politician. And what's carried us is that in the, how do you call the period between the two, like l'entre-deux-tours, how you call it in English? Uh, we call it the in the interim in the between interim? the two elections. Okay, well, during this period, uh, Macron was really, really the worst. Like, instead of saying, like, oh, I'm going to do, like, he just said, oh, people are going to vote for me or being against my project. And he should have just been, like, I don't know, trying to be a little bit more humble and say, oh, I understand, like, I didn't do as well as I could have done at this, this, this but please still vote for me and he stay like, oh, I'm the best and I'm going to win anyway. Um, and for Marine Le Pen, I think she improved a lot, like for this election. And that's why we decided to just like kind of uh, interrupt a little bit the kind of, uh, interrupt a little bit the way of her campaign by going to one of her press conference. It's because we thought people were forgetting who she really was. Like with the campaign of Zemmour, like he was the one saying the most racist stuff. And so he was taking all the racist part of Normalizing the extreme her. right. Yeah. And Marine Le Pen only had to just, yeah, do her own campaign and not talk about it. And at the end, people thought the most useful vote on the extreme right was Marine Le Pen. So she got everything, but she didn't have to talk about all the racist part of what she was bringing with her. And then on the second run, it felt like for a lot of people, it was, oh, she's, she's still extreme right. But is it that bad? Like, she is more or less normal. Like, she looked normal. So that's why we went to one of her press conferences and then tried to raise, like, a picture of her with Vladimir Putin in a big heart just to tell people, hey, realize, like, remember, like, for... Marine Le Pen president would be a uh, strong link between France and Russia, even when Russia is attacking Ukraine. So that's why we did. And then they like, put me on the floor and like dragged me all outside the press conference. And that was cool because yeah, we'll like, it the showed that like, she right is here, violent. And as, as soon as you like scratch the stuff, oh, okay. You can. It's funny. Like I wanted yeah, yeah, to laugh yeah. about it. Like when I saw the image of me just being dragged on the floor, but I was so scared that she would win. I didn't want to make jokes about it. Like I wanted to tell people this is serious and this is a real danger. But no, she lost. It's fine. We can make all the jokes about me on the floor and like that's fine. But something I just wanted to say about her becoming better. Before I interrupted the conference, we waited with all the journalists for one hour because we were okay with her having her press conference. So we let her speak for one hour of all her strategy on diplomatic stuff and everything. And she looked so much more competent than she used to be. Like she seemed to, like, of course, it's not the vision we have of diplomacy and all of this, but she seems like she knows what she wants to do and the way she wants to do. And she, she gives the impression that she was ready to be the president. So I'm happy the only thing people realized about, the, like, the only thing people remember about this conference is just that she has been violent with uh, me. So that's perfect. But she is not that stupid or, like, incompetent if you compare her to all the candidates we had. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, that that's so... That is that's a good correction then, because I think there is a sort of strand in some international press who sort of like people see she's a bad saleswoman to act for actually what French folks want. Uh, I do want to ask you, uh, Pauline, first, what can you tell us about these upcoming legislative elections? Traditionally, they sort of echo the uh, what has happened in the presidentials. It's sort of an odd system that's yeah. sort of right on the heels of the executive, you have mm -hmm. the legislative branch elections. Uh, how does it work and how does it traditionally kind of play out? Well, in the past, it used to be not at the same time. And what happened is that several times we had a president and then uh, the deputy was not from the same party. So there were something called cohabitation that made everything difficult. So they changed the system and said, no, the election is going to be right before the legislative. So we have a majority and the president elected can do what he's been elected to, what he's been elected uh -huh. to. And no, there is a big hopes uh, for people from the left. Uh, and from everyone around Mélenchon, they're trying to get the same mobilization they had for presidential election, and they're trying to ha replicate it for the legislative election. And instead of having 
uh, each uh, circumscription, each, uh, I don't know, electoral stuff, uh, they decide yeah, to make yeah. it a national, uh, national election. And they're having a big campaign saying we want Mélenchon first minister. And so they want to make everyone vote for the people of their party, no matter who the person is. We don't even know if they're going to put the picture of the person on the on the communication. They're just going to say, vote for this person because it's going to make Mélenchon Premier Ministre. It can be smart from their point of view so that they bring as many people as they can to vote. Uh, but it makes it difficult also to negotiate with the other party because the idea was that, okay, all the left know we are going to go together and decide where we put which candidate to have as many left and green right. candidates as possible in the assembly. And it's now supposed to be like the alliance are supposed to be decided like today, tomorrow. It's just super stressful for everyone because we want it to work. And no matter what we think about each of our political party, we just want it to work for our future and for like ecology and for all this. But we don't know if it's going to work or not. I mean, it sort of echoes uh, the beginning of the presidential in which everyone was supposed to have these meetings, get together and kind of form a left coalition. So maybe, I don't know. I'm, obviously, we're hopeful for it. But Ninone, as someone who was working in voter mobilization, uh, we were talking before and you were saying, even though it's possible for the next week for people to register, you don't expect many people to participate in this election who did not previously. Um, what do you think are the kind of tactics or methods that can be made to sort of unite people to vote tactically for the left? Or is it more of a free for all or just how do you see it? Well, the problem with this election is to figure out whether we have to lie to people in order for them to get, go to vote or not, and how much do we have to lie to them. Because in France, when you are a deputy of the opposition, you basically have no power, no rights, and you are kind of useful. You have the right to speak up and to be listened by the media, but if you are in the opposition and Macron has a majority of MPs that vote, that vote for him, he can do whatever he wants, just like he did for the past five, year, five years. So there is two ways we can mobilize people to go to vote. Whether we kind of lied to them and made them believe that a cohabitation is possible. Like for, for me, it's a lie because I'm sure we will not have a cohabitation. There is no way we will have enough uh, MP on the left Macron side, even, even, uh, even no if we have um, a, a great deal with all the political party, which is quite great, but there is no way looking at the numbers that we can have a cohabitation. So, so two options. First one, lying to people and make them feel that the, the cohabitation is possible. And so they enter the election thinking that they can choose the next prime minister, whether it's Mélenchon or who else, I don't care. I would love him to, as a first minister. Or else we have to be a more, bit more nuanced and t saying to people, no, there will not be a cohabitation, but still it's important to have uh, MP on the opposition, on the left and the green side, because... and. The list is quite short why we need to have those MP. I would love to have Pauline as an MP. Uh, it would be marvelous if she was on, on the majority, but she's on the opposition. She's someone I can ask for favor to, to, to talk about some issue in the media, to, to help some, some people to, to do things, but she will not be able to provide, to, to, to prevent a bad law from Macron. So it's super hard to say to people to go to vote for this, for this election. What we are currently doing is just making sure there is a campaign. We are targeting 20 local districts in France where the abstention rate was super high and we are organizing debates mm. uh, adapted to young people to make sure that they wow. are aware of who are their candidates in their uh, local district to make sure that they are given a better interest in the election and that everything is not at the national level. But we will, we do not expect to have a huge impact on the voter turnout for this election because mainly for now, like, like Pauline said, it depends on the agreement that we have uh, uh, among the left party. But no matter what, our president will be for the next five years, Emmanuel Macron. And this is something that we can't do anything about for now and that, and it's not raising a lot of hope for sure. I'm, am I clear to, uh, uh, on the two? Yeah. I'm not super cheerful and hopeful, uh, but I'm trying yeah. as I do my job to 
try to bring people back to politics, not to lie to them and not to always tell them that we can win where it's obvious that we can't. But there is still things why we should yeah. show up for. But lying to people has been what we've did for the past 20 years and it hasn't helped people to trust politicians in a better way. So I don't want to do that anymore. I actually really appreciate you saying it exactly in that way because the sort of breach of trust, especially sometimes from the center left to the civic left, uh, and to folks, you know, who are more issue oriented or activists has been almost made an irreparable block between people. I will say, and I will have more to say about this on the show and to you both, I'm sure, uh, at different times. But coming off that election in Slovenia, we had some kind of hard, some kind of tough truth ads, you know. And I do think maybe uh, one of the tactics of getting people to vote in this election could be similar, which is that you do these things not for some reward, not for a tangible change in your life. Sometimes you do these things because they're the right thing to do. And it's your turn to stand up and just, you know, would it kill you to vote the right way this afternoon? It won't even, it won't even cost you anything. Like, just do the right thing. Uh, sold for its own sake, right? There's no candy. There's no pot of gold. Like, this is what you see on the box is all you get. Uh, Pauline, like, what are you doing to reach out to Melishon voters in your district? We know you are running for the assembly. It's exciting. Uh, you are getting that huge committee program bump right now. All of our viewers in your district are going to, for sure, <laughs> volunteer, etc. But, you know, yes. but what are you doing to, to kind of be a, unify, a candidate who is unifying the left as you're running? So for now, we, we are kind of, you know, like in a weird period because like the national party are negotiating the alliance or no so i decided to start campaigning like just because we can't just stay there doing nothing yeah, that's right um so what i've done is that i wrote uh, i wrote an email to all the people like to all the local committee of the melanchon party to say hey i'm doing this i'm, I'm in this bar uh, every week if you want to come meet and i had some of them on the phone so they know i'm running and i they know I want them with me and they also know if they end up being the candidate, I'll support them. So we try to have locally good relation. Um, and what I start doing is that we go, do you say in English door to door or do you just say canvassing? Door to door. Uh, in Texas, what is the right word you use? In, Texas, in Texas, we call it block walking. Yeah. Uh, but no, everywhere else it's, you know, door to door, you know, okay. canvas. Yeah. Okay, door to door. So. So since last week, we started doing door to door every evening, like uh, around 7 p.m. when people come back from work. So we just go door to door in the district where people vote for us, the Green, and where people vote for Mélenchon. And we just go door to door and say, hey, I'm your candidate or there is our candidate uh, in the next block or in the next uh, um, place. Uh, and would you want to join us and to campaign with us? And it works quite well. Like most people are happy to see their candidate knocking at their door and saying hi to them uh, which is cool with like what is cool with me is that people saw me on the Marine Le Pen stuff so it's very easy to say oh you've seen her on the TV being dragged with by Marine Le Pen's uh, security guard so it helps because people feel like oh okay so I know you so it's you oh okay so they feel like they <laughs> meet someone who is famous and it helps it's true. We know that name ID is the single most important thing in getting out the vote. And actually, many candidates sometimes are out there trying to make a case when they should just be running ads that have their name in their face. So people are like, oh, that's a person. Because like that's the first step <laughs> towards getting a vote is literally yeah. making yourself be a person to someone. Uh, uh, how, how, how are you feeling about your campaign? What should we expect from uh, the folks in your district? How you doing? It really depends. Uh, it really depends, like it's going super well, like there is like, um, people are all happy, like, oh, okay, you're the green, oh, we like you, like there is a very like positive idea about the greens uh, in my district, so that's cool. And there is a lot of um, motivation, like people want, like the activist wants to go out and like go to door to door and like, give flyers and stuff. It depends a lot on if there are going to be another candidate for Mélenchon, like if there is one, it's going to be hard, but if they go with us, we can try hard, but we can try to be on the second, on the second run. Like mm -hmm. we can pass the first, be in the runoff, and yeah. be on the second run. But I don't think there is. Yeah, but this is possible. Like if we put all the left together, this is possible. And on the right, because it's such a right wing district, on the right there would be at least three candidates on the normal right, 
plus one or two on the extreme right. So this is possible if I'm the only one on the left and on the only green stuff. It's always cool to campaign. Like it's been three years now since I got elected at the uh, municipal council. Mm -hmm. So people start to know me and like, it's not like they feel like I'm just coming out of nowhere just because it's the election. Like they've seen me all the time for the past three years. Uh, they saw video of me uh, doing stuff like they know me and most of them know just know my face or just know my name or they just know there is a young green girl in the municipal council with annoying the mayor and at least they know I exist and I'm doing stuff. So it helps and it makes it easy for people to just decide to join, which is cool. I, I actually love doing this, like doing campaign locally where you mm -hmm. just decide together what you're going to do and then you do it together and then you see it like you receive mes messages from people saying hey is it every thursday you do your stuff at the bar can i come next friday or next thursday i'm like yes and that's cool i i love doing this and if we don't win because we're i'm not going to be deputy in june except if there is a miracle but i'm not but it doesn't change anything because on the way or well, it changed a lot but what i'm saying is like when you do a campaign together, all what you've done is not lost because you haven't won the election. Like it's still something you build for the yeah. future. It's still people who are going to feel like they have an attachment with the green. It's still the city that's going to feel like, oh, but we have a green candidate. We're there. We know her and we still build something. And on the long term, it matters. That's why I don't want to let the Mélenchon candidate be the only one because they are not from the cities. They're not going to stay. They're going to disappear the day after the election. And I don't want to miss this opportunity to build more about what matters for us, like to make a bigger, like we want to be a counter power locally uh, for all that matters for us, like the everything about ecology, but also social justice and stuff like this. So this is a lot of things we're going to build, even if we don't win the election. No, last question goes to you. And I will say kind of this feels like such half-baked convention, not over-baked, not half-baked, over-baked conventional wisdom uh, that is dripping out into the kind of pan-European and North American press about elections is are like, guess what? It looks like the traditional parties in France have lost power, right? This has obviously been a story of, you know, for a long time of them losing power. To me, the more interesting thing is that it seems that the next tier down of parties, whether it be, you know, the ecologists or Mélenchon or either you know, either this tightly bound thing or this amorphous personality based thing. Uh, they're like, do you, I mean, how do you see the future of the kind of constellation of parties that we see it like, you know, how stable is that situation in your view? Well, looking at the, the presidential election, there is not uh, two blocks, but three blocks right now in the in French politics, three blocks, uh, three political parties. So the real liberals with Mélenchon, uh, with uh, with uh, Macron, the far right, which is a, a really sturdy block that we've seen on the on the second turn, everybody turned to Marine Le Pen, and uh, the progressive. And everything depends on the alliance that they are going to build for the legislative election or not, because. It, it, it has a huge impact on the finance of the political party and everything will be uh, driven from that. And we, I think that for the next five years, we will be looking a lot more at the political party than looking at the um, civic uh, organization and the civil society. Because we've tried so much for the past five years as, civil organ as NGOs and civil organization trying to make uh, Macron change his, his way of saying things. It mm -hmm. didn't work. Like, I mean, we walk with petition, we organize video with every, every YouTuber you can imagine, we've disobeyed, we, we did that with everything. And now uh, we, well, we, uh, I feel that we don't want to, to continue to do that. And a lot of people have more um, faith in, politi than, in politics than ever, because we think that's the only place that we can have an impact for the next five years. So everything will, there is really high, high hope on the uh, capacity of the left party to merge into one sturdy thing in a nice way for the legislative election. And um, the engagement of young people in politics will depend a lot on that. And I think they have a huge responsibility and we are looking at them every second of every hour on Twitter for the past two two weeks and hopefully they won't disappoint us. They already disappointed us a lot for the presidential election, not being able to merge into one political party. That was 
a great mistake of them. And if the this if they disappoint us again or for the legislative election, this will have a strong marks on the way people see politics because people do remember that. In French, people don't vote for two reasons. They really do remember uh, the Treaty of Europe. They had a referendum. They said, we don't want that. And after that, politicians did that, even though they, the French people said no. They really strongly remember that. And if we give them excuse not to go to vote for the next 10, 15 years, uh, that is people don't that don't... Uh, that have the same opinion are not able to merge into one political party or one candidate. How? Why should I? I, I move on on Sunday to vote for anyone. I mean, they are not even pretending to care about their life. So there is a really high hope and really high responsibility for the next five years now. I mean, at least there's that hope. I would say in the U.S., it's kind of that ship has sailed and we're about to see two like really, really shitty elections uh, uh, this year and then two years from now. But inshallah, things will not break down quite like that. And Pauline, we are all in your corner. Thank you both uh, for coming on and keeping us up to date and just appreciate you all. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Merci. Yeah.